Hi, and welcome to The Secrets of North Saqqara. Okay, so if you go to North Saqqara, you don't want to miss out on these two treasures. Let's have a look at a map of North Saqqara. You can see at number 17, Teti's Pyramid. Do you remember Teti's Pyramid? That beautiful pyramid that had those pyramid texts inside. Let's have a quick look. Wow. That was the time when writing in your pyramid was more important than how big your pyramid would be on the outside. Those were the magical texts to get you from this world to the next. Well, next to King Teti's pyramid are a row of tombs. So we've got 18, 19, 20 and 21. Two of them are always open. The tomb of Meruruka and the tomb of Kagemni. And these are the secret treasures of North Saqqara. Hi there. So the second secret of North Saqqara is the tomb of Kagemni. So if we have a look at the plan of North Saqqara, you can see where uh, King Teti's pyramid is, numbered at 17. And then you've got 18, 19, 20 and 21. The son-in-law of uh, King Teti, so he married a royal princess. So he's part of that inner circle. And he had the largest of those tombs in that row. 32 square metres by 32 square metres on limestone blocks. So these blocks of stone came from the Tura quarries 8 kilometres away. And each one of those rooms is beautifully carved in bas relief and painted. Amazing. So who is this guy? Well, I'll read you some of his, uh, of his titles. He is the vizier, but not just the vizier for upper, lower, uh, upper Egypt or lower Egypt. He is the grand vizier, overseer of both houses. Overseer of the two houses of gold. Wow and an overseer of the two treasuries. So he is responsible for all the tax collection from Upper and Lower Egypt. He is the High Priest of Ra. Of course he is. Remember the High Priest of Ra, Heliopolis? One's getting all the mortuary lands, weren't they? Uh, they were the ones who uh, were in their own way disempowering the central authority. That one of the reasons why it led to the collapse of the old kingdom. He is the stolist of Min. So Min was a very important deity in Egypt, represented creation and goodness and life and that sort of thing. Overseer of the two chambers of the king's adornment. Aha, so this guy is even more important than Maruka. He's got the ear of the king. He's got his up close and personal contact with the king. Okay, that's really important. Director of the Mansions of the White and Red Crown. Wow, again, he's the, he's the chief guy. So the two viziers are reporting to him. So he is the king's right-hand man. The keeper of the head adornments uh, and ornaments of the king. So all the uh, collars and uh, crowns, all of his responsibility. The overseer, the scribes of the king's documents. So anything the king writes down, he's responsible for making sure that those orders are carried out. Overseer of all the king's works and of the six great courts. So, it's quite something, quite something. So let's have a look at his tomb. Wow. Um... If you look at the entrance, either side, you'll see a carved pictures of him. Now, remember, it's two lands of Egypt and the Egyptians believed that you needed two of everything to have marked. That's why there's both sides. Close up personal look at his picture. That's original paint, 4000 years old. OK, so they carved it, they painted it and the whole place originally was like that amazing there's no wooden door in, on the entrance 
This is a chapel for people to visit, to utter the name, so the deceased person is always remembered. If your name is forgotten, your spirit dies. Remember that. Well, so let's have a look at uh, some of the uh, scenes here. You can see them tending cattle. Cattle going through a ford in Lower Egypt, crossing a ford, and you can see the hippopotamuses underwater. It's quite, quite uh, cool. You can see a skiff scene of fishing. And again, all those uh, plants and things uh, tell us what was growing in Egypt 4,000 years ago, what sort of animals that they had. On top of the uh, roof, at, at uh, I think it's A, I'm sure it's A, those, the, those are two boats for him to join King Teti to make the journey to the afterlife and back. Look at the size of them. And they, I know they're only, I know they're only um, uh, stone ones, but that's what he had. Um, inside the burial chamber, he had a stone sarcophagus. He's got a Rolls Royce. He hasn't got a BMW. The BMW goes inside it, the wooden coffin. So he's got his own sarcophagus and a wooden coffin that goes inside. So remember, this is going to be a mausoleum for his family. So when his wife dies, they would open up that tomb and put her coffin inside. Any children. And so these places were used for hundreds of years. It wasn't just for one man. It was for the whole family. The celebration of, of his life and um, all the things that he needs to feed his spirit. It's all in, the, in this uh, 32 by 32 square metres. If you go to North Saqqara, you mustn't miss this. It is two or three hours worth of wandering around, looking at these beautiful carved pictures, and some of them have got paintings on there as well. So don't miss out on this one. This is one of the secrets of North Saqqara. Okay, thanks for listening. Don't forget to, forget to subscribe. I still need 100 subscribers so I can get a domain name. And bye for now.